Hello everybody. Welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm just going to do a quick wet and wet um, fast and loose landscape painting. This is an 8x10 sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. 100% cotton, 140 pound uh, cold press. So I pre-wet it before I turned on the camera and now I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. I'm thinking that I might just um, go through the colors of the Ron Ransom palette and just put a quick, you know, just playing around demo of the palette, but we'll see what happens. So here we have some raw sienna. I have nothing in particular in mind, so I'm going to use this to kind of map out what I'm looking for. switch over to some ultramarine blue it's a little grayed because it has the raw sienna still mixed into it I'm kind of scrubbing this just so I don't get any brush marks um, trying to alleviate that in this one Just playing around where I want things to go, flattening things down again. I'm gonna grab some lizard and crimson. I'm not cleaning the brush. I'm just gonna grab that. And I think it'll go for a more sunset type vibe. grab some Payne's Gray for the darker sky up above. Okay. Um, as I'm kind of just playing around with this, I'm having a little bit of trouble stretching it out, so I apologize uh, for that. Just getting the paper to lay flat. Uh, I have that Payne's Gray on it. I like to use Payne's Gray to map out the edges of um, masses of water. So I think I'll do kind of a little foreground water element right here. And then we'll have land back there. Meaning that I probably should have taken some of the sky colors instead of just that raw sienna. I'll take some alizarin or bring it down that water, a little bit of ultramarine. Okay. Now my horizon line, put back in there, but I want to break up my horizon line. So I'm going to light red oxide, ultramarine, a little far distant purple. And I'll make it small and varied. Make a hake. I'll grab some lemon yellow and start getting some of that yellow aspect. Maybe you mix a green in a moment with that. This is more towards the foreground. It warms things up. This is almost straight from the tube. I'm gonna switch back to a raw sienna into this mix. A little further back. Then a line for perspective so it recedes. And I could even grab a little bit of that lemon yellow and do a quick dash, but thinner because of that recession. Okay, uh, so so far we used Payne's Gray, Ultramarine, Rossiana, 
Um, I'm not sure if we use burnt umber yet, so let's get that going. We use light red oxide, we use the alizarin, lemon yellow. Yeah, I think that's the only other color we really need to um, add in order to get the Ron Ranson palette out. Um, I could use burnt sienna, but I don't think it's actually part of the original palette. I think that could be mixed from those two colors. I'll probably grab some burnt sienna. I like ultramarine and um, burnt umber for dark. So I'm going to put in a grouping, let's get a bit of foliage, a ground foliage here. And then this side. That's fuzzy right there that I'm trying to get off. Let's bring that guy's shadow down. Foreground cropping of grass. Move it along that edge. And I think it'd be fun to put um, some trees right in here. So I was going to go wet and wet. Um, I think what I will do is stay wet and wet right here to map out the trees to get a soft foliage. And then I will um, do a dry off to get a crisper foliage. And then at that point, we'll call the painting done. Getting that foliage to come out. We do have a mixture of um, that burnt umber and ultramarine on the brush, and it didn't mix perfectly, so it makes a nice variation in there. I'm going to grab the number one rigger at this point and put in some branch effects. Since it's wet and wet, this is going to diffuse. And I'm going with the number one because of um, I know that the diffusion is going to take place and I really just want kind of a thin line and um, it will widen out. It'll just be better than the uh, number four. So we can do these kind of like smaller and we can bring a bigger tree element that comes up here. And then when it dries, we'll do another layer of this and that'll create a uh, depth to the scene. So just to reiterate, with these lines, they're going to be diffused and soft and they're going to lighten up as the page uh, dries. Then we're going to not go over these exact lines. We're going to um, create stuff alongside it and that's going to um, give us the illusion of depth because the next one will be clearer and uh, darker. Um, shadow, if we have the light source back here, we're going to have shadows radiating, radiating back in this direction. And then it's going to go in the opposite direction. I can do a foliage layer up here. You can probably tell that the paper buckled again a little bit on me, so I'm going to flatten it out. This is the number four rigger I had in my hand. I just wasn't using it as if I had paint on it. Okay, let's do a quick dry off and um, then we'll see. Let me pause it. Okay, now that it's dry, I'm going to 
stipple in with the hake brush some more foliage and use the rigger for some darker uh, twigs and branches. Um, now's a good time for me to say if you um, ever follow along with one of these tutorials, you have my express permission to um, sign your own name on it and to uh, sell anything you do from any of these tutorials, just to let you all know. So I want you guys to be successful and um, have you know money for art supplies. That being said, I'd love for you to consider supporting this channel. You can do that by liking and subscribing. And also have some links down below if you want to do any um, Patreon donations or anything like that. I have exclusive videos and other fun stuff. Okay, so here is raw sienna being stippled in. I'm trying to vary my densities. that. We'll grab a little bit of lemon yellow and I'll let some pure lemon yellow get stippled and then I will mix some um, ultramarine with it. I'll try to get that green going. So I get a little bit of water. I'll just grab a little bit of water with just the edge of the brush just for me to mix the lemon yellow and ultramarine. This is kind of a little bit of wetter mix, so I'm going to have to be careful going back over it because it will start smearing it and it will start um, blending things together. That grass line. Bring just a quick brush swipe across of that. Let's grab the number one rigger. I'm going to try to mix my dark now. I was grabbing Payne's Gray, but I'm going to do that ultramarine blue as well and uh, burnt umber. And get a little bit of water just so I can get it to move a little bit more. So I'm going to do a secondary darker tree right here. The other one was wet and wet. So this one, it will dry a little bit lighter but it will stand closer um, in appearance to us because the other one was lighter. So we're creating a sense of depth right there. And I'm going to darken his branches. I could have added darker branches to the previous one and that alone would have gave uh, some depth to that one. there's different approaches you can take to these. For example, if I look at, oh, I'll probably try it with one of these, let's see. I'm gonna put darker ground shadow. It just does a nice contrast as well, just visually. If I'm looking at this guy, I'm going to start putting some extra dark branches, but I'm not overlapping. I'm kind of just doing my own thing with the new set of paint over it. It'll help add a little roundness and depth to that. Oh, and we'll have this dark on here. We'll put a little birds in the sky. Okay, I'm going to take this dark and stipple in foliage for that. So this is the closer one. Okay, get that shadow down. And I'm thinking that I might want to try to put a person in this, maybe somebody uh, fishing. So, whenever I cut this 
paper to size. I have these small strips, which you can use for bookmarks or other fun stuff. But um, a useful, uh, I guess, the way to use these is to also see if you want to put somebody in and kind of just do a little bit of silhouette of a fisherman, somebody walking with a pole over their shoulder, and maybe they have a dog on the ground by them. I'm just making just little marks. I can put it in and see if I want that in those spots. Um, it also lets me think about the way something is uh, facing. I have to be careful, it's still wet right here. I could put it here and say maybe I want a fisherman here. Maybe I want the line coming out across and the line coming out to the water and have them fishing in this spot. So that's kind of how you can use these scratch papers to um, kind of plan things out. In fact, let me do a quick pause so I can do a dry off and I'm going to paint over in that spot. Okay, so let me grab the number one rigger, try to get some large quantity of paint on the brush. That's light red oxide right there. Uh, throwing figures in is not my forte. It's something that I definitely need to uh, practice. There's a lot of things I need to practice, but the throwing figures in is definitely one of them. A little shadow, a little reflection. A fishing pole down here, coming out the back of the arm. Fishing out, there's the pole coming out. Too much water on there for that thin line that I need. Create the little ripples where it's sitting. It's a fishing pole. Let's throw some um, color in there just to get a little bit of that more feel to them as being a person rather than just a uh, dark silhouette. That's why I grabbed that light red oxide to begin with. I may do a quick dry off because I don't know if you can tell in the picture, but that's like a load of water that I put right there. All right. So I had to dry that spot off because I had just put just so much water in that, um, that mix that there was really no way for me to kind of just add anything to accentuate. Um, this is light red oxide just to give some sense of depth to this. And at this point, we're pretty much done. Um, I'm gonna kind of trail out that shadow a little bit more. Trail out other shadows. Bring the shadow down. You can give a little bit of a shadow for the pole. But then, if we want, we could accentuate a few spots along the edge of the water. But ultimately, it's really just fun doing the wet and wet, drying off, and then doing another layer on top of it, and just getting that um, that play between the two. So let's just sign this real quick, put a mat over it, see what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed, and like I said, you are always more than welcome to follow along with one of these tutorials and um, sell any of your results. And if you follow along, I also want to, I'd love to see your results. Um, I'm on Instagram and um, other social media. You can see links for those down below. All right, let's find a mat to put over this. So we'll sit it right there. Okay, and there you go. 
nice cheerful day. I'm down in Louisiana, we're getting our first freeze. It's gonna get down to the 20s and then actually the teens, um, either Monday or Tuesday. So you all stay warm, think of warm places and have fun painting.